Hello everyone, how good of you to join and welcome to a new Let's Play of Crusader Kings 3. Today we're starting a very interesting game, a modded edition of this beautiful game as a Republic. I've already played this game several times now on my channel. My latest one, the Crusader Kings Survival, if you haven't seen that yet, I urge you to watch that where we start as a small Viking and go all the way to Emperor of Scandinavia on the Iron Man difficulty. Today we will also join the Iron Man difficulty but with the mod Republic. Republic means we can play as a Republic, uh, more spe specifically as a city-state. Let's have a look, let's go into the settings right away. Up here we have now with the Respublica mod a new tab, Respublica, and here we can now choose between four different Republics that we want to start as. So we have Cordoba, we have Pisa, we have Iceland, which is well an island, and we have Venice, Venezia. And of course we're going as the Supreme Doge Domenico I of Venice. In that case here we cannot go with any own ruler. We have to go with the predefined rulers here. And Contarini is the house we are starting with, is the oldest Venetian family whose origins are often linked to the beginning of the city itself. Domenico I of Venice stands as the first of his house in a time of decline of Venetian power. He took back many of the lost Venetian holdings, built up the navy and boosted the economy of Venice. And with him we're going to start, we're going to start with our city um, and hopefully get to power. This is difficult in many ways. First of all, Iron Man difficulty of course, but other, uh, the other one is that it is a city that we are playing with and we are surrounded by big empires like the Holy Roman Empire and France. Let's get cracking. Uh, before we start, I want to thank all my supporters, my Patreon supporters, and if you want to join me live on my recording sessions, you can also follow me on Twitch. Just have a look at the video description. Let's get cracking with Venice. Enjoy. Alrighty, and here we are already in this map. So just before you're wondering, yes, I've also installed some visual improvements, mods that improve the visuals like the land masses, like the map itself. I think this just looks way better with more contrasts, better textures and stuff like that. We also have more events installed and stuff like that. And yes, well, this is us, Dodge Domenico II of Venice. He's 58 years old, so he's probably dead pretty soon. We will not care about him that much. He's got some three sons and one daughter, all looking fine and there it is the grand city of Venezia this is our starting location we can't play this one in the standard version only with the mod and as we can see well we do have a few things here first of all we have the Dodge's Palace which is a special building for Venezia only and the Dodge's Palace acts as the residence of the government of the Republic of Venice an impressive structure it houses multiple chambers dedicated to things such as council senate administration and justice. This is pretty powerful. It gives us lots of taxes and it also gives me quite a big army boost. We have 2,200 soldiers available at the moment, which is not small. Let's just have a look around. Venice, of course, is our capital. We also have the city of Mestra and the city of Chioccia right off the right off the, the coast here and one empty holding that we can choose. So this game is going to be interesting. We are going to focus solely on only on Venezia, right? We are, of course, going to conquer stuff, but they're all going to be vassals, city-states, satellite states of us. We are not going to make up a big empire like the Holy Roman Empire. We are going to try and survive with our city and prosper and develop, like in real life as well as Venezia was, right? Now, the House Contarini is our house with that. Let's just unpause the game real quick because there's an event happening, the Republic Choice. So we need to make a choice right now. As a Republic player, you need to make the choice of if you want to play as the house heads or the elected ruler. We can now decide, do we want to play with the house primarily or do we want to play with the elected ruler primarily? This is pretty interesting, as this one here allows us to always play as Venezia, right? And if we lose an election, well, then we just play with the uh, new house that is uh, that has won the election, basically. That is a bit buggy right now, I think at least, so I'm not going with that, even though it's very tempting. We're going with patricians, so we always play as our house, as Contarini. What is it about with the elections? That is something new, right? So if I open up my political system here, my political map, uh, most serene Republic of Venice it is, and we do get a tab here that is called Republic, and there we have term limits and leading families. So we do have elections, right now we have a life term. This can actually change to up to one year per uh, election per year. 
right? And then we have the leading families. So these are the respected houses in Venice right now. Uh, we have the respect of 4,900. Pretty good. Um, the other ones are weaker, but if one of them gains the upper hand, they actually get elected to the next doge, right? So we would lose control of Venice then, and we would go back to our core country, which is Veneto, that we have right in front of Venice. Very important to know, right? We always need to win this election, otherwise we will just be a vassal of Venice, and we have to get back to it again. That's the main tricky thing that's going to be... Um, a a major challenge in this game throughout this game now the other thing is we have some other um well city states in this game of course we have pisa we have the pope um we have over there cordoba right and we have also iceland up here which is also a republic now let's have a look once again at our city we have quite a few things to do first of all our legacy for our house now i like to go as always with the noble veins inheriting congenital traits is pretty good as we can really groom our next rulers to become better and better over time i like that a lot we also need to make a lifestyle choice he is already pretty good with diplomacy he's old i'm not really focusing too much on him anymore matches the focus it's going to be we still need a spouse let's just go with pure alliance power of what we can choose here so normandy for example would be pretty good and france it's normandy normandy is actually stronger right so let's go with normandy my son always also needs a wife In this case here we don't need alliance power um it might still be actually it might still be good let's go with france right so that we have that day. my son though doesn't need any more children really um then we have domenico contarini the third generation first of all he needs a lifestyle we're going with um, stewardship for him and he also needs a spouse he's 11 so for him we can already start with the grooming process and we might just find us a genius or intelligent um wife right now there's none so we're just going to wait there a bit longer right that's my family we also got my smaller sons they're going to be mostly for alliance powers there so denmark sounds pretty good there's actually some children coming out of that he himself got a son also 11 so we're going to keep him for now so the house is going to be very important a vital role and venice of course let's just have a look at the other things we have our council so we have our archbishop michaela um, let's make him the court physician. First of all, he's got good learning and we should also get endorsed by him at some point. That would be nice. Alrighty, so lots of stuff that we have now chosen. Lots of decisions. It's always about these decisions. Let's have a look around where we would like to go for first. Now, as I said, we're not going to make something like this, right? The Holy Roman Empire. But we still need to expand a bit. And I would like to get some strong cities under our control that makes sense to me so pisa here for example is the other republic that we have and i would like to start a claim on that right away why pisa first of all sorry is highly developed so the development of 11 it's rich it has three holdings already some buildings on it and also um no allies at the moment that ca could come in handy the other thing is napoli salerno i ah, will have to look at that later we're playing on Iron Man difficulty, so, yeah, well, every decision matters. I can't go back, I can't roll back, um, and we need to be very careful about our future thingies that we want to do. Now, some marriages have been secured. We have now a, an alliance with Denmark and Normandy. Of course, since we're only playing with one city, really, and very small, we need to have alliances all the time. If we don't have strong alliances, someone might just conquer us and we're done for. We also don't want that. Now, France is also in our control now. Perfect. So, that's a good start. We are part of the Cisalpine culture here. Early medieval time right now. And what, what are we researching? Royal prerogative. That is actually something we don't really need. Um, battlements would be better. But, yes. For now, we have to stick with that. Call to war. I'm, of course, accepting. No one is going to attack me, most likely. But... We can't afford the honor cost, uh, the honor penalty if we decline. Another thing that I would like to do real quick is raising the crown authority. Yes, we are playing as a republic, I know, but we still have this system here intact where we get more taxes, for example, out of my vassals, more prestige, where also um, we can change laws and stuff like that. All right. My heir is Jacopo. He's also going to be the next Dodge if we die because we still have the highest respect. Another very cool thing about this whole thing is that it 
really promotes um, intrigue style. So, you know, we have, for example, House Piacenza. If I have a claim or a hook against him, or if I can murder him, we would be better off, right? We don't want this house here to become the next uh, Dodger. So I could try and start murdering him. Or I could try and find some secrets about him and get him away with a hook. Mm, might be a good option as well later on. Right now, social manipulation. Um, Mayor Arlicino has grown bolder. His challenge is no longer passed unnoticed at the council table. Um, should we ignore him? We could also give him something. Tasks that are impossible. Alright, I will ignore him and steal his ideas. It's just the mayor, right? He's the mayor of Kyocha. A very weak city right in front of uh, Venice. Venice, by the way, development rating of 20. I don't think we have a higher developed city anywhere other than perhaps Rome. Rome is at 30. Yep. And probably also Constantinople, which is at 35. So those are some real powerhouses, right? But we're not that bad either. Alrighty, and the claim has been fabricated. We can see it done. 72, it costs me. He still doesn't have an alliance or so, so let's just use this moment and declare war on Pisa right away. I'm going to raise my army in Venezia. There we have it, some 2,200 soldiers, which is pretty strong, and we march towards Pisa. I can also go with another diplomacy lifestyle. Let's go with writing history. This enables us to write a poem or an epic, right, that we can go with. Um, it cost me some 50 coin, but it could help our house prosper quite a lot. Let's do this. So a family epic that we want to start here. And Rodolfo, the accomplished storyteller, would cost us 100. Uh, we are pretty bad there with the money right now. Um, I'm not doing, I'm not writing that for now. So we need to wait there a real a quick moment, right? But we're going to do this then afterwards, after um, some conquering. Very good, this is done for now, and we have won this battle. We are now laying siege to Pisa. And he's attacking once again, but of course he's not got a very high chance there. At best we could actually capture the Dodger of Pisa himself and just end it, but I don't think that's going to happen. Alright, he tried it now three times, I think this should be then over. And we can also ransom someone already. There we have captured him and the city itself. And let's take it over. Our first expansion as Venice, La Serenissima, La Venezia. And the great city. I love that city. I've been there several times. It's such a marvel, really. And I, I'm really excited that we can finally play this one with a mod. Because in the base game, we can't. Now, yeah, Pope Alexander gains some favors. That's very good. Pisa, let's have something here. Let's increase control right away of Pisa. So there is traditionally after a war a bit of a lower control rating here right now um i still don't have a viable oh yeah right she's just for the alliance in my case here let's continue with the next claim then right away let's have a look at capua the famous gladiator town or napoli napoli has a very good rating there as well no allies at the moment let's lay the claim to that so the goal here is, yep, well, basically to have satellite states, right? City satellite states throughout Europe that are going to fund us, that are going to send money and taxes and uh, levies towards us, and that, that are going to make the city even better. We are focusing our economical advancements right into Venezia and Veneto, right? So that is our core domain here, and this we want to develop to the highest levels. Everything else we don't really care about. Now, there's the Norman Conquest of England. I don't care either. Um, I just need to make sure that we have the right amount of people there. He's got a very beautiful wife there. She's uh, 16, she's of age, so there might be some children coming out of that. Um, Domenico Contarini is also a good, a thrifty clerk, so that's going to help us. And he still needs a wife. Right, so we should not forget about that. We got some geniuses now, but she's gluttonous. Uh, she's patient and ambitious, but she's genius. Medium chance of children. He would not like that so much because basically she's not very, you know, prestigious. But she has the genius trait and breeding my own geniuses is very important to me. So, yes, let's send this one out. It's not really about the alliances there. Plus he's far away from being the Dodger. Yes, call to war. Once again, we don't need that really. 
and Andrea Contarini, my second born, we should also do something with him. There's no genius, but we might find something with intelligent tree. Dorothea. She's Greek. She's deceitful. Nothing that would hurt fertility. She's low born though. So once again, um, that's not going to be so good for his prestige. But once again, it's a long time before he actually comes to us or becomes Dodger potentially. And it would only be good for us if we have some geniuses later on, right? So their prestige, of course, is, well, recovering until he comes of age anyway. Now, let's just have a look at Venice once again. We have a bit of money. We also have the next life perk. Diplomacy per level of fame is good. And we could also create now the Duchy of Venice. I'm not doing that yet. I'm probably going to do this with my next generation then. Also, my son could marry. Once again, we have... There's actually an alliance here and an intelligent one. This is not so bad. Let's get this one on the way for my third one. And my daughter. We still need to find someone. And this is going to be pure alliance power. Mm. Of Worms. Yes, let's go with that. It's not a powerful alliance, but my grandparents live there. <laughs> so I just have to do this one. Uh, matrilineal is not working. Bear in mind, matrilineal, it's actually checked, but no one wanted to do that. Okay, lustful, there is someone. Bear in mind, there is something very important here with matrilineal in the Republic that we need to, um, um, well, that we need to consider. And that is that the election or the respect for our house is the most important thing in this game. Right, because if the respect, as I said, is not high enough, we might get outvoted by another house and thus lose Venezia. Respect is comprising or compromised of with the renown that we have of the family, and the more members we have in the family, and the higher our renown gets, and the higher our fame of the house itself gets with all the living members that belong to it, the better for um, our voting power that we have in the, well, in, I guess in the Senate of Venice. So that is pretty important, right? We need to keep that in mind at all times. Nothing else that I would need over there, though. All right, how's it looking with my claim? It is coming along. Perfect. My Domenico, please hold on for a bit longer. You're 64. He might die now soon, but I also don't want to wait. And Jacopo, he's going to be really good there. Me just touched. Um, the child is good, but not educated, unfortunately, not really educated, but still fine. And they should make some babies here, hopefully. Right? That is very important that we look out for that. Other than that, we have a bit of money. I might, I might, I might, I might invest that into, for example, farms and fields. That gives me some additional money. And I think this is the best that we can do um, for Venezia. To improve our economy in this way. Another cool thing is uh, trapping of majesty. So I stand above my subjects as a foreign ruler, unequal in the realm, dressing the part with replendent garments and jewelry would serve as a subtle reminder to everyone that I'm in charge. Uh, what do I need? So only the finest one or I don't need anything that gives me 100 piety. Why not? By the way, we are not endorsed yet. Still not endorsed. Let's have a, a scheme against the bishop. And my spy master is going to help me in that scheme. So this becomes successful. We need to be endorsed by the priest. Otherwise my piety is not looking so good. Um, and then we also have the speech. So this is something we can do every five years. It does cost me prestige. And it's pretty good for the house um, in Venice. So we are basically giving it to our countrymen in Venice. Um, and that is one of the modern things that we can do. So I've decided to give a speech to the citizens of the most serene republic of Venice. Let's have a look at what's happening here. As I continue to speak, a voice rises above the crowd. I pause temporarily and the speaker takes advantage of this to yell out at me, You loony piece of a horse's ass! Speak reasonably! Not this stung-filled mockery of a speech. And the other members of the audience glance at each other uncomfortably. Hecklers aren't anything new when it comes to these kind of speeches and it is always an awkward affair. Should we engage? Should we arrest him? Or we'll sit back and take it? Let's engage. You know, we would lose 125 prestige, but it really doesn't matter. Actually, it was successful. My speech turns now to my family, Contarini. I will praise it to the gods, raising our standing in most serene republic. 
So all Marvel us or my house is powerful. Let's go with all Marvel us because it gives me 50 respect. And also the claim is finished. Perfect. Oh, and there we have it once again. There's someone else now engaging. And the speech is ending with 100 prestige that comes out of it. Wedding celebrations between me and my wife. We take the money. And... I think we got Salerno, right? No. Napoli. Napoli. And they still don't have an ally, so I should really be rushing for that. Let's raise my army once again. Another important city. And Pisa has also almost full control. As we can see, the taxes and the levies we get out of it is increasing the higher the control gets. So we get some money already from Pisa. For the glory of Venezia. Into battle. And Domenico, my... Jacopo Contarini has given a new son. Domenico, he's going to be called. I'm fine with that. It's getting a bit confusing perhaps at some point. We got two Domenicos now. Oh, and we also need to the loathsome. England doesn't like us so much at the moment. We promised aid and we're not coming. I could give him some gold. Let's give him some gold to keep him happy. I need my troops myself right now. Alright. Um, and I'm also improving my religious relationship right now. As we can see, we're now endorsed by the bishop as well. Because we have um, the scheme. And as we can see, yep, yeah, it's actually giving us 0 0.4 per month possibly or potentially. Also going to have her using patronage. Now it's not giving us that much back, unfortunately. So let's continue managing domain. Uh, he's still fighting at us. Ah, Abos Abundancio. Who's that? Gaspare. He's nowhere there. Oh, by the way, Domenico has gotten a daughter. She's sickly, but she's quick. <laughs> it's not really helping out. She's good for alliances later then. Um, who is that? Abustanzo? Ah, it's my third-born son, right? Who is it? So he's my grandson. All right, they have Odone. I'm fine with that. I'm in the middle of a war. I can't focus on naming bastards and children. Alright, this is looking good. We just need to take it really. Bah, he's going against us again. With some nice fighting here. And boom. Defeat him once again. My son Andrea has given birth to a daughter. Oh my goodness, now we are really getting on here. Um, my daughter, Rick Richarda, Richarda, has given birth to another daughter. She's called Pietro. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Now it's a grandson. Alright, so Pietro is the grandson in this case. That's good because that's all for the glory of the house Contarini, which is the important thing. So we should have actually a nice, a nice, a nice, yeah, 6,500. We're still the highest one. Trade rumors. So there's a trader from afar who tells us basically that some prices are going to increase and some are not. We need to, well, we need to think, do we actually want to believe him? Um, he doesn't seem dishonest, but I don't know how reliable his sources are. Or I will follow this man's advice and make some investments based on these trade rumors, potentially earning me some income. Hopefully these rumors prove reliable. We gain some 20 stress. So why not? We're not really paying anything here, right? And the rumors turn out to be unreliable. We get at least 100 stewardship lifestyle, but that's it. And another one, we have marital recrimination. Cecilia burst into my chambers. Yelling loud enough for the entire mansion to hear it. Vital has just insulted my honor. That is one of my knives, uh, my knights. And do not bother with this nonsense. We are loosening some opinion, but other than that, it's fine. And outlet oh no, my second born son died. Oh, Andrea died. Alrighty, Andrea, why do you do this to me? You were one-eyed. Alright, that's probably why he died. And look at that, we are actually losing him here. How is this possible? Distraction upon distraction and yeah, 
basically we lost it so we do need to use some of our um we need to use some of our prestige now to call them to war unfortunately this will cost us he's not doing it is france doing it come on you people um and Brene, they're weak we have no proper alliance is that right here We lost the alliance with Denmark. They could have come in handy now. Unfortunately, unfortunately, looks like we're losing this war. Going for the August. What is happening? All of these family trifle matters distracted me so much that we totally got the war out of control. The problem is those forces are each one of them in wars themselves. So they're not helping us out right now. Um, plus, they don't like us that much. We could sway them. I'm at war with King Philippe. Oh, I see. Alright. That is really unfortunate. Some of these powers are at war with each other. And because I'm an ally with one of them, I'm actually joined into the war. And, oh, this is complicated. My... No. Wait a second. Jacopo. He's my chancellor right now. He could make a really good steward. So I'm going to take my son as Stuart because he's got the, the traits for that and we're swapping them and nothing in this world is certain especially in times of war the Venetian claim on the county of Napoli has been no different as this conflict is no longer against Count Sergius of Napoli but Duke Richard of Capua instead it might be wise to re-evaluate the situation oh god what has happened now it has joined Yes, Napoli now belongs to Capua, and we are now at war with Capua. Um, this is probably unwise. It's not belonging to Capua, but it's allied with Capua. Yep, it actually belongs to Capua. All right, it really belongs to them. We end the claim. That's that. That was very unfortunate. For some reasons, I don't think it happened before the war. For some reasons, Napoli became part of Capua in the middle of the war and we lost. Basically, it. that's it. Alright. We still have the Casus Belli on Napoli. But since my allies are at war right now, um, there is no way I can win this. This is a very unfortunate event. Alright, but we can't change anything here. We still have Pisa, our city, our satellite city that we have over there that is paying us nicely now. We could, by the way, also change the culture of Pisa. Promote our own culture. That would take five years though. Let's not do this. Other than that, yep, we are still alive. That's a good thing. Venice is still growing. We have a few problems right now though. Um, and that we need to tackle in the next episode. Stay tuned.